Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we do get started, I do want to let you know that this program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. And I particularly want to thank Garland and Jeff so much for their support. We'll send access to our premium site, as we do with all donations of $7 or more. You can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net, and there is a mailing address at that uh, email at that uh, URL as well. So just go to support.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for today's episode of Crime and Peter Chambers. The original air date is uh, July the 6th of 1954, and the title is The Double Indemnity Murder. Crime and Peter Chambers. Created by Henry Kane, transcribed and starring Dane Clark. Private investigator, duly licensed and duly sworn, Peter Chambers. You're a private eye. That's your business. Anything else, that's for laughs. No laughs now because you're working on a case, and the case happens to involve a little matter of murder. And there ain't no laughs in murder, despite the Broadway playwrights and arsenic and old lace. There just ain't no laughs in murder know-how. Your client is an insurance company that stands to lose 300,000 solid simoleons, and you're down at headquarters at the office of a good friend by name of Detective Lieutenant Louis Parker. Frank Reed, wealthy manufacturer of dolls, senior partner in the firm of Reed and Carson, dead by reason of an infusion of bullets in the office of his factory on 23rd Street. Happened last night at 10 o'clock. Now, what's your interest, Peter Pan? I've been hired by the insurance company, Louis. Uh, what insurance company? Samson Indemnity. Insured Frank Reed for 150000 Double indemnity, which is 300000 in case of accidental death. Frank Reed's brother is beneficiary under that policy. Correct. Gent by name, John Reed. Mm, quite a guy, this John Reed. Poet, dreamer, highly sophisticated hunk of nothing. Look, Louis, this guy stands to pick up 300000 big ones. Frank took out that policy only four days ago, paid one premium. The company's going to get stuck, and get stuck heavy. Exactly why have you been hired, Pete? Well, overall, to help solve this murder. But if it turns out that John Reed knocked off his brother, the company saves 300000 bucks. So they hire a private eye. You know, sort of an investment. Mm. All right, what do you want to know? Uh -huh. To coin a phrase, the facts, pal, the facts. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> See, now, the doll factory's on 23rd. Office on the ground floor. Windows face out to an alley. Mm -hmm. Now, Frank Reed had an appointment with his partner for 10 o'clock yesterday evening. Private business conference. Windows were open, hot night. Partner gets there, and she finds she, him... She? Did, did you say she? Oh, ho, ho. Sonny, where did you get to that? She, and a gorgeous one. Viola Carson, young, beautiful, skillful designer. Junior partner. Boy, is she... I'm, I'm... Okay, okay. So she gets there. Yeah. <clears throat> when she gets there, according to her, the play shows signs of a terrific struggle. Frank Reed's on the floor, three bullets in him. That's her story. It's all we got is her story. Mm. Anything else? Yeah, the guy's dying. She revives him. He comes to for maybe a minute. He tells her, according to her, that someone came in through that office window, conked him from behind... That he tried to fight him off, and then the bullets came. See, he tried to write a note after his assailant left. Then this Frank Reed dies in her arms, and clutched in his hand is a note. You got the note? Yeah, right here. Yeah, take a look. See, uh, the cuff link is... 
That's the entire note? The cuff link is? Yeah, that's right. The cuff link is. Notice the uh, scrawl at the end there. His uh, strength gave out. He was trying to tell us something, but Lord knows what. Was he wearing cufflinks? Yeah, he was. Any connection? None that we can figure out. Petey, why don't you go down there and look over, as they say, the scene of the crime? Factory's closed, but the office is open, and that gorgeous partner of his is there. Well, you talked me into it, pal. <laughs> I'll join you there a little later. Swell. Oh, uh, by the way, Louis, any special suspects? Well, uh, if it wasn't some kind of ordinary holdup, the only ones with any interest is John Reed, this partner, Viola Carson, and then there's John Reed's wife, Linda. Mm-hmm. Oh, and a guy she's kind of stuck on, a dancer by the name of uh, Salvatore Cortez. Here, let me rustle up some of the details for you. You see, this John Reed is married to a haughty, kind of high-type thing. Twenty minutes later, you're in the ground floor office of a couple of doll manufacturers, Reed and Carson. The alley windows are open, but there's hardly a breath of air coming in. The walls are lined with shelves holding hundreds of dolls. All the same, the one type of doll they manufacture. There's a large desk, and that's cluttered with many papers, and on that, there's a doll, too, a sample of the one on the shelves. But seated at the desk is a real doll. She's wearing a man-tailored suit, but man-tailoring or no, this one's all woman. Blonde, blue-eyed, with soft rose petal lips. She stands up, and the figure she displays adds a sparkling new interest to the matter at hand. Yes? What is it, please? Are you, uh, Viola Carson? Yes, I'm Miss Carson. Miss Carson. That doesn't hurt either. You tell her who you are and why you're here, and she smiles and dimples and cooperates splendidly in the question and answer routine. She corroborates most of the facts that Lieutenant Parker gave you. And that's about all I know, Mr. Chambers. Did you read that note that he had in his hand? Yes, I did. The cuff link is, and then a scrawl. He just couldn't complete it. Any ideas on that? No, sir. None. I uh, noticed that with that lovely blouse of yours that you wear cufflinks, too. Yes, at the moment, I'm wearing cufflinks. Ah. Now, you say you were to have a business conference with Frank Reed for 10 o'clock last night. Isn't that an unusual hour for business conferences? Well, um, Mr. Chambers... I wish you'd call me Pete. Why? Oh, people I like, I like them to call me Pete. And I, uh, like you, Viola quick like that? That's me, quick as a bunny. Well, and we have the same natures. I'm rather precipitate in my likes and dislikes, too. Mm. Well, how do you uh, precipitate with me? I like you. Well, then, before we start talking about cocktails and candlelight, let's uh, get back to the detective and suspect routine. Shall we, Viola? It's your party, Peter. Uh Uh-huh. Now, about that unusual hour for a business conference. Oh, there's nothing unusual about that. We frequently had conferences at that hour. I see, I see. Do you know Frank's brother, this uh, John Reed? I know him very well. What kind of a guy? Best I can express it. A character. You'd have to meet him to understand. You know his wife? Linda? Well, that's her name, I think. A spectacular brunette. Mm-hmm. And one I hope will never call you Pete. Well, from what I hear, there's small chance. From what I hear, she's got a guy other than her husband, whom she loves to call by his first name. Salvatore Cortez. You know him too? He's a flamenco dancer at the Bongo Club. Aside from being a terrific dancer, he's quite an inventive guy. It was he who originally gave Frank Reed the idea for this doll we make. This mama doll. Oh, you mean Frank stole it and this guy bears a grudge, huh? Oh, no. He was well paid for his idea. There was no hard feeling between Frank Reed and Cortez. Well, how about hard feeling between John Reed and Cortez? None there either. From what I hear, this Cortez is real palsy-walsy with the guy's wife. Well, you simply have to meet John Reed to understand that. I intend to meet John Reed. Um, look, Mr. Chambers. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Peter, Uh I, uh, I have got to go now. You can pick this up with me any time you like. I'll be home most of this evening. My address is... I know your address... How? Uh, from the police. Oh, so. All right, then. Au revoir. The 
You'd have loved to have gone with her. But you've got work. You mess around looking the place over. You take a doll off the wall shelf and you handle it. Ah, cute. Then you look the desk over. And you pick up the doll on the desk. And suddenly you slip through the floor and you stoop for it when... Somebody with a pea shooter in the alley and the target is you. A look out of the alley window shows you that whoever it is is gone. Then the door opens. That sounded like gunshot. Well, it wasn't backfire, O'Bean. Pro or con? Meaning? Were you doing the shooting or were you being shot at? Shot at. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I was getting too nosy. Well, I think I'm through here. Hey, Louie, look. Do you think I can sort of steal this little doll and take it home with me? The one here on the desk? What's with you and dolls? Well... They're this kind. I got a little attachment for this one. It slipped from my hands. When I stooped for it, those shots came over my head. So this little one sort of uh, saved my life. Sure, sure. Anytime you need a carriage or maybe a tricycle or something, just call on old Louie. So Papa takes his mama doll back to the apartment. And there you shower, clean up, and then you're off again on the usual routine pitch, checking on all the principal characters. It's late when you finally get to John Reed's place, but they should be expecting you. You called and made an appointment. Good evening, Mr. Chambers. I'm Mrs. Linda Reed. Linda Reed. Tall, olive-skinned, and attractive. And she greets you with about as much enthusiasm as an Eskimo greets an ice cube in an igloo. She's wearing an off-the-shoulder evening gown tight to her figure. And she's got the kind of figure that a dress should be tight to. Mr. Reed is in his study, napping. Uh, I'll uh, fetch before him. you start fetching, uh, Mrs. Reed, a couple of questions, please. Well, I'm in rather a hurry. About Frank Reed, deceased. Was he married? Nobody's told me. He was a widower. Two children, both grown, both living in Paris. Did he have brothers and sisters? Only John, my husband. He was the only brother. Only other relative, in fact. Did they get along, John Reed and Brother Frank? Well, let me put it this way. Frank adored John, as witnessed the life insurance policy in his favor. On the other hand, John absolutely abhorred Frank. Abhorred? But why? Because my husband abhors anything or anyone who is dull. And he found Frank a stuffy boar. I see. Uh, your husband is a poet of sorts, isn't he? Well, let us say, a writer. Do you sell many things? <laughs> John? Oh, no, nothing commercial about any of John Reed's work. Then uh, where's the wherewithal come from? Oh, Frank was always very kind. As I said, he adored John, actually admired his peculiarities. I'll fetch him now, if you please, Mr. Chambers. <laughs> She goes down a corridor and disappears. And you move about, looking things over in the well-furnished room when... And you start going in the direction of the shots. When a tall, blonde man with sleepy blue eyes comes towards you. Are you uh, the alleged detective? Yes, yes, I suppose... Uh, Chambers, it, uh, isn't it? Yes, right. Now, look, what was that well, noise? I imagine but... you'd serve a better purpose in there. My study. Gunplay, clues and whatnot. Think about that. Mrs. Reed! Mrs. Reed! Oh, yes? Those shots, what were they? Somebody out there, on the fire escape. Well, did you see who it was? No, and whoever it was is gone now. He ran down the fire escape. Oh, man or woman? I couldn't tell. I saw somebody, but I couldn't tell. Oh, that's too bad. Well, let's get out of the shooting gallery and go back out there and talk to your husband. Well, have you two apprehended the misguided soul who attempted my murder? What do you know about him, Mr. Reed? Uh, you are John Reed. Yes, I am, and I know nothing about it. I was just opening my eyes from a delicious dream. As far as I know, it could have been my dear wife attempting the assassination of her beloved husband. I wouldn't put it past her. Notoriously poor shot, though. Well, as long as we're all safe and sound, I'm a little late. Oh, yes, of course. Off you go, my dear Linda, and my best to Mr. Cortez. Good evening, then. That was Salvatore Cortez I was referring to. My wife is quite enamored of him. A highball, Mr. Chambers? No, thank you. Look, uh, don't our modern poets indulge themselves in the ancient emotion of jealousy, Mr. Reed? Yes, they do, I suppose. And they do not. Speaking for myself, no jealousy. 
Oh, I should explain, of course, that my wife and I cordially uh, detest one another. I see. And now that the howling clatter of pistols has subsided, I do wish you'd state your business, Mr. Chambers. Well, sir, as you know, I represent the insurance company. Yes, and... and they have some absurd idea that I murdered Frank in order to fall heir to $300,000. Well, sir, it's a pretty good idea at that. In time, I'm sure I'd have come around to thinking about it. But I didn't, that's final. Any idea who did? None, whatever. Any idea who just took pot shots at you? Same answer. I'll say this for you. You're amazingly unruffled. Well, I'm a fatalist, Mr. Chambers. My philosophy is that of the ancient Indians. Predestination. To put it in modern and laconic terms, when my number is up, it is up. I'm always singularly free of worry. Okay, let's change the subject. Now, your wife... Ah, beautiful uh, woman, isn't she? Yeah, well, I mean your wife and this uh, Salvatore Cortez. Oh, great uh, dancer, that young man. Performs at the Bongo Club. That's where she went. No, no, no. What I mean is, uh, what Mr. do you... Mr. Chambers, you're reaching in your attempt to be tactful. There's no reason for that. None whatever. If she's in love with him, just between you and me, I don't give one little toot in Hades... Now, if you please, a very good evening to you, sir. Next stop, the Bongo Club. From there, you phone to Viola Carson that you'll see her later. And then you lap up some scotch at the bar and you watch this Salvatore Cortez perform. The guy's dark, slender, and graceful, wrapped up in tight black pants and a white silk shirt and banging his heels against the floor like he's sending out Morse code messages. When he's through, he joins Linda at a secluded table, which turns out to be not so secluded because you sort of mosey over. Chambers, really, this oh, is too much. Oh, you are the Mr. Chambers, Mrs. Reed now, has look, been telling look, me. Hello, Buster. For me, you don't have to make with that phony Spanish accent. But I do not understand. I will not have you speak oh, this way on. to me. Come off I... it, will you, pal? I've done a little back-checking. Your name is Sam Cortland. You were born in Brooklyn. Now, how do we get it, straight or phony? Okay, you get it straight, Mr. Sleuth. And straight is like this. Beat it. Sonny... Unless you talk nice, I'm going to yank you up by your little lily white shirt and maybe paste you up against that wall. What do you want? Just a little chatter. Don't let him intimidate you, Salvatore. The name is Sam. Didn't you hear me? I know what his name okay, is. Okay, what do you want? Answers to a couple of questions. Civil answers. All right, all right. Let's have them. You wear cufflinks? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Did you wear cufflinks last night? Last night, I don't remember. I don't remember putting it in my diary. Oh, you're very funny. Next question. Where were you last night between 9.30 and 10? In my apartment. Can you prove that? I don't have to, pal. If it doesn't suit you, you prove I wasn't. You won't cooperate, huh? Words of one syllable, no. What am I wasting my time for? That's your time. It's my time that you're wasting that bothers me. You keep making with the crack, Sonny, and sooner or later, I'm going to rearrange that phony pussy of yours. Now, please, Mr. Chambers. <laughs> You grab a cab to Viola Carson's place. And a cute little hideaway she's got. Terrace and stuff. Exactly the spot for cocktails and candlelight. And she's most gracious. Oh, won't you sit down, Peter? Is there anything new on Frank's death? Any clues? Any ideas? Well, there is something beating around the back of my head, but I can't put my finger on it. It's a funny case. Somebody running around taking pot shots at everybody, even me. Please, please sit down, Peter. All right. Ah, oh, good. Wait, I'll take that doll off the chair. It's one of ours. That's it. What? Sweetheart, I think I've got it. Where's your phone? <laughs> You call down to Parker and you ask him to round up the entire cast of characters and bring them to your apartment. And there, with Parker's cops making a blue-coated semicircle in back of the principals, you go to work with the two dolls. The one from Viola's place and the one you took off Frank Reed's desk. And now Peter Chambers, the gentleman with the dolls, is not going to do an Edgar Bergen or a Paul Winchell. 
Peter Chambers is going to do, uh, Peter Chambers. Thank you, Lieutenant. Now, first, ladies and gentlemen, the regular doll. Listen, please. And now, the doll I took off Frank Reed's desk. Listen. You know the difference? Mr. Chambers, if you're so set on playing with dolls, I have a suggestion. Oh, shut up. Go write yourself a poem Just or a something. Just a minute, Louis. Louis, easy, Louis. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, the regular doll. Now, the doll from Frank Reed's desk. Now, there must be a reason for the uh, vocal restriction of the second doll. There must be something jamming up the sound box. Sure. This doll just says... Ma, and the other says, Ma, Ma. Hey, you know, you sound cute, Louie. Oh, I don't shoot. Now, let's get back to the unfinished note that Frank Reed wrote. The cuff link is... And then he passed out before he could finish it. Now, let's figure it this way. There was a tussle. He tore off his assailant's cuff link, and he put it somewhere. And he tried to write out a note as to just where he did put it, so that the killer would be identified. Now, it's my hunch that it's in the innards of this doll. So, I unscrew the head, and I dig in, like so, and I come up with a cufflink with initials SC. SC for Salvatore Cortez, or even for Sammy Cortland. What about that, Sammy? Why, I, I never saw it. You get the picture, bother. Louis? You see, this Brooklyn tamale bumps off Frank Reed. So John Reed latches onto 300,000. Then he's going to bump John, which explains the shooting off that fire escape. So then dear old Linda latches onto the set 300,000, and then Linda and Salvatore... Linda, she talked me into it. That's a lie. It was all his idea. We were going to get married, Linda and I, but it was her idea. She talked me into it. Just the reverse. He talked me into it. I don't care who talked who into what. Just keep on talking, Mr. Flamenco Just a minute, Louis. Just a minute. Look, Sal. What about me? Why should I be part of your private shooting gallery? Well, all right. After I got out of there, I I realized my cufflink was missing. But then the place was lousy with cops, and I couldn't go back. But after a day, I knew they didn't have it. How'd you know? Well, I had my initials on it. As long as I wasn't arrested, I knew they didn't have it. And then? The day I came back for it, you were in the office. I saw you with that doll in your hands. And I heard it, as you said, vocally restricted. And I knew where that cufflink was. I've had experience with dolls. The idea for this type doll was mine. I used my gun. You dropped in time. Okay, you two. Let's go. And so Parker links up with his culprits and heads for downtown. And you link up with the lovely Viola Carson and head for... uh, Cocktails and candlelight. And there you've had Crime and Peter Chambers. Dane Clark was starred as Peter Chambers. Crime and Peter Chambers was created and written by Henry Kane. Others in the cast were Bill Zuckert, heard as Lieutenant Parker, Bill Griffiths as John Reed, and Leslie Wood as Viola. It was directed by Fred Way. This is Fred Collins inviting you to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Dane Clark in Crime and Peter Chambers.
Be with us again next week at this same time for another adventure by Peter Chambers in Crime and Peter Chambers. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. This has probably been my favorite episode that we played of Crime and Peter Chambers so far. Uh, the characters uh, were good here. A bit over the top, but I think in a very good way. Particularly, you know, the guy who's about to inherit the $300,000 and doesn't care about anything. You know, that was just so uh, wonderfully uh, done there. Uh, and I also love Peter getting all hard-boiled with uh, the dancer. That was a great scene and, uh, and really one of his best. And there was great humor and rapport that went throughout there uh, with the doll. And I thought it was a pretty clever clue. And it was nice, too, for radio to work in an audio clue because so many of these programs rely on visual clues, and in many cases, visual clues that we don't actually see. And uh, so I appreciated the use of an audio clue. Uh, really did add something to the overall story. Uh, well, now we turn now to some listener comments and feedback, and we're going for a couple of reviews of the Amazon app. MJR says simply, absolutely great. And Marsha in North Carolina says, I love listening to these old radio detective stories. I listen before bed, and it is a relaxing escape. These shows were aired before I was born, but I love old detective TV shows and movies. I am certainly getting my money's worth. Well, I'm glad uh, you think so, Marsha, and I appreciate you and MJR taking time to leave reviews on Amazon. It's truly uh, appreciated. And uh, that will actually do it for today. We will be back uh, tomorrow with the adventures of Philip Marlowe. And then uh, next Tuesday, be sure and join us for another episode of Crime in Peter Chambers. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook 